flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your NASCAR betting and DFS home. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me to recap all that was the Firekeepers Casino 400, as well as look ahead to the Federated Auto Parts 400. It's Brian Twining, and uh, as you can see by the fist (laughs) pump, it was a pretty dang good week for my co-host. So, Brian, obviously you're doing well, but... How well are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Uh, my my late edition of the old fart Kevin Harvick on an outright at 25 to 1 wow. actually came to fruition. I was on him all week in the placement market. So, yep. you know, I got that top five, that top 10, his matchups. Uh, matchups went well for me. Um, you also had a had a decent week. It was a yeah. it was an exciting race. I feel like this was one of the most exciting races on the season. You really didn't have a feel, a good feel for who was going to win, even going into the, you know, the last restart and such. So it was, it, it was a great weekend. Yeah, it was a fun weekend. Uh, we are recording this a day early because Brian will be traveling tomorrow. So we wanted to make sure we got this out for everybody. So appreciate everybody. I'm sure you guys won't be mad to have it an extra day in mm-hmm. your, yeah. uh, in your inbox. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome, please hit subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up notification if you are enjoying the content. We are working our way towards 500 subs. Uh, we will also do be doing the Christopher Bell mini helmet giveaway. Uh, you can go to the last episode and watch that. Uh, I'll probably do that um, for the Sunday morning show. So make sure you get your uh, your entries in um, so you have a chance to win that. But without further ado, Brian, let's jump into it. Let's show everybody the green that is all over the screen. Um Outrights, Tyler Reddick, not so much. Ryan Blaney, not so much. As you mentioned, Kevin Boom. Harvick, 25 <laughs> to 1. Just a little half unit. Just here you go. And uh, boy, did that pay off. As you can see, Brian was on Kevin Harvick. Harvick top 10 was his best bet in this very show last week. Uh, came back with a Harvick top 5 and then add, obviously added the outright. Um, so Kevin Harvick is just paying the bills this week. <laughs> yes, he uh, is. Also had a nice run uh, of some head-to-heads. Harvick over Logano, obviously. Eric Jones over Ty Gibbs was a nice call. I was pretty surprised to see how much mo- uh, you know momentum that got throughout the week. I did get a piece of that as well. Yeah, what's what's crazy is Eric Jones showed once again like it. He is plenty good enough if the yeah. car is it, below him is good. I mean, we saw it with him like prior to last year in the JGR team. So Jones is a great driver and kind of what we expected with Ty Gibbs. Like he he finished great during the race, but he did run into some things that he was did not have to experience the previous two weekends. Yeah. So uh, our little thought process there definitely panned out. Yeah, and Jones is a guy that thrives at higher speeds. Obviously, super yeah. speedways is a place where he tends to pop, but this is a fast track, a two miler. It's you know, it's got a lot of similarities there, so um, that was a good idea. And obviously, when we see prices that don't really make a lot of sense or a solid you know plus number, I think we tend to jump on it as we did with Larson over Elliott, with Hamlin over Bush, with Harvick over Suarez. Like those were really nice calls obviously worked out and then you know once again you win the show bet because that's the trajectory this uh show has been on and honestly our christopher bell top toyota that was... bet, i don't I, i'd make it again if we were racing this week yeah i think i think it was in the right spot um i had a christopher bell head-to-head on my betting card um and you know it just it a lot like you know it just <sighs> <laughs> wasn't quite there so as you can see from my card some green obviously not as much as brian's but solid nonetheless i had larson um how do we feel about kyle larson do we feel like he was competitive or did, did he kind of like i felt like he was there and he was kind of doing some stuff but at the end of the day like especially towards the end like i didn't really feel like this guy has a legit chance to win well 
what what's interesting looking back at that race um the fact that he came from pretty far in the field multiple times to get back into like the top five and top 10 range was incredible amongst yeah. itself but once he got to the front it didn't seem like he had the power or yeah. just the, the speed to overtake some of those guys and again this track uh, probably uh, more than we've seen of late Clean air definitely is king in this next gen. Car. Yeah, it was really interesting because, um, you, you know, getting to the top 10, you know, in top 10 ish range was super yep. easy for any of the elite guys. But getting in that like top three and top two, like Bubba, Bubba was faster than Logano, had the better car, should have yep. got around him. And eventually he did. But by the time he got there, it was too late. And Harvick was so far gone that it wasn't he wasn't going to catch him. So, um but yeah, it was really interesting to see kind of, you know, we can get to certain spots on the track. We can get to yeah. top threes, but once like, okay, now I need to go win this race. It was really hard without a restart or without some, um, you know, backed up traffic kind of slowing down the leader. They just, they get so far ahead and, you know, it's almost like a F1 race where they're four or five, six seconds ahead and they're just kind of cruising and, um, don't have a lot to deal with. So that was yeah. kind of interesting. Um, Rough day for William Byron. Logano was sort of there. I felt like, you know, obviously at one point was in second towards the end of the race, but I, he was clearly slower than Bubba. He was clearly slower than Harvick, so I never yeah. really felt like he was going to get there. Uh, Logano wow. top 10 did come through, so that was nice. Uh, minus 135 price. I ended up going up after qualifying, so that was a good jump on. Obviously, I got a little bit of Harvick at the top 10, so that was good. Um... And I had a Harvick top five as well. So that was that was a nice day. Uh Eric Jones, not so much. Ricky Stenhouse. Ricky Stenhouse. Eric Jones was there though. Like he was running right yeah. here or at that fifth spot pretty much the entire race. So yeah. that was kind of a rough one to Yeah, and it was a, that was more of a numbers play for me. Like I liked him. Yeah. I thought, okay, he can push a little more and that's just so much more value. Go top ten, I probably get it, but that's okay. Um and I then... feel for the for the Austin Cindric top ten, I mean <sighs> That, that was that wreck not made even his me fault. so mad. Like, yeah, that wreck made me so mad. Um, the top I think ten though that, especially especially too like with that number again. We were talking about this. Like we got the number at the correct price, it, you know, because you you had a feeling he was going to qualify well. He yep. uh, you got it even at plus money after qualifying, which was ridiculous to me. Um, it, he has pace and he's been great. It's just. So these guys, some of these guys are like I mentioned it on Twitter earlier today, talking to somebody. You have to set your bets and pray basically at this point with these races, but because everyone's fighting for playoff points, everyone's fighting for that one extra finishing position because maybe that'll help propel them into the playoffs. Yep. So, I mean, especially these last couple of races, you're going to be setting it and praying to the NASCAR gods that these things hit. Yeah, well, and we have three races till the playoffs. We have obviously Daytona, so any of the restrictor plate racing is going to be a lot more of a crapshoot than anyone wants yeah. to admit. We have a road course, and then we have one. Uh, we have obviously Richmond this week. So, you know, there, this is your chance. And Kevin Harvick taking up one more spot, like Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex are really kicking themselves cool. for not sneaking a win. And and you know, we'll have to see kind of how the next couple weeks goes and see if maybe even having a win doesn't guarantee you win because dude it's it, it when you look at the standings so like the regular season point standings martin yeah. Truex jr i believe is fourth or fifth and yeah. ryan blaney is like fifth or sixth in the playoff points but he may not even get in yep. if they get a 16th car to win and he's not one of them yeah. so i mean and... this is like a chaotic season yeah, and we've seen with Daytona, like anybody can win that track. Yeah. Michael McDowell can win I'm that just track. I was going to say this is going to be the Michael McDowell or the Todd Gilliland so, victory. Yeah, so you have to up. be you have to be ready. So that will be interesting, and kind of fun to fun to monitor. So as you can see, um, Brian's big payday uh, moved him into the lead. These are our numbers since the All Star break. Uh, we've done much much better over the second half of the NASCAR season. Uh, we've been better about picking our spots, better about uh, targeting more matchups and avoiding, you know, spraying the board with outrights. So um, overall solid, um, you know, we, and I'm ready to ready to get back to it. Let's look at our DraftKings lineup. Another positive week, Brian. I mean, obviously, we're not winning the Millie Maker every week, but that's not a realistic outcome. But we're having fun. We're figuring stuff out that's and we're getting right. much better at it. So 
Uh, this was our lineup. Having Hamlin and having Harvick was key. They were both two of the most important drivers, as well as Ryan Blaney getting a top five after starting 24th. That was that was really solid. Obviously, if Christopher Bell finishes where he was running, this lineup looks even better. And I was just going to say, so imagine if Bell just finishes the race, say, 11th. Yep. We would have three guys that led 30 or more laps during yep. the race, which that's that's incredible. Like the I fact mean, that you had that in one lineup, that definitely would have paid off way bigger than this. Yeah, I mean, Christopher Bell was running well. Like, we had three cars crash, and we still cashed. Obviously, it's, this is more of a cash uh, lineup than a – or was this was a cash tournament, so, you know, whatever. But um, three cars still out, and we still, but we had the right three to, to kind of move along. So um, that was really good. Almarola was frustrating, but that's, you know, Almarola. And then Harrison Burton, whatever. Um <laughs> Other lineup I had put together, a uh, similar story, um, a lot more consistency. Alex Bowman, the week I say this guy yep. can't do anything, he pulls a top 10 out of his butt. So that was interesting to see. Obviously, going from 30th to 9th, that's good to see. Byron was fine, moved up to 12th. Uh, Blaney Truex was solid, um, you know, just kind of finished where he started and obviously was alone. Alex Bowman was 88% owned in this. That's oh my crazy. Lord. Uh, shouts to cash, but um, I'm interesting uh, to see. And then uh, one of my other winning lineups, um, actually it's the same lineup, just a different contest. So uh, my one, oh, this is the other one. So yeah, Kyle Larson, uh, Ross Chastain, man. I'm not feeling as, as good as I was with that holding that outright <laughs> ticket. Um, but you know, I still, this, this was okay. I think if I don't have Cindric, you know, wreck on lap 24, um, I'm feeling much better about it. Haley was solid at 5%. Um, Brad K top 15. <laughs> anyway, so. just, just, just you saying that is, is funny because we went from Brad Kozlowski being a championship contender a couple of years ago to all right, he finished in the mid team. <laughs> he didn't wreck himself and he didn't wreck others. That's all we really want from him. There were a couple of moments though, where he was running inside the top 10 that I was getting extremely oh, nervous yeah. for some of the guys that we had just thinking yeah. that he was going to be the fire starter. When you're holding outrights on other drivers and Brad Keselowski's driving around your guy, you start to get <laughs> real nervous. Yeah, that's the epitome um, of the of the airplane gif of the the pilot just like sweating his brains out trying to land the plane. Mm -hmm. That's that's exactly how I feel every time Keselowski gets to be yep, one of my guys. Yep, for sure. Uh, all right, well, let's take a look at those early lines and see what we can come up with. See if we can't find some value. Uh, Martin Truex is your favorite at six to one. Obviously, needs that win. So this would be yep. this is a great time for him um, to come up on this track, right? Uh, Denny Hamlin is right there as well, six six and a half seven. Uh, Kyle Busch right there at seven. Christopher Bell inside ten to one. Interesting to see him priced there because this is usually where know, we bet him at fifteen and then he gets up to eight or nine. Yep. Um, and then Chase Elliott all cut off because he's the last one who's kind of inside that 10 to 1 at some book. So um, I guess initial leans, initial feels um, on this range of the betting board. Well, let me just start with, um, so Martin Truex Jr. opened at 6.5 or 7 at most of these books, and it's already been bet down a pretty significant amount. And, you know, for very good reasons, Martin Truex Jr. has been incredible at Richmond. I mean, he's led 80 or more laps in eight of the last nine races here. Dude has like three wins in the last six trips to this track. And he's actually been, you know, decent at the shorter flat tracks this season. So I can see why there's a lot of optimism, but you will not find me going to the top of the betting board with a guy who just, I mean, he hasn't been able to put it, put together an entire race all yeah. season. Like this is not the, if he was in that uh, Kevin Harvick range from last week, yeah, oh, hell yeah. I'd be playing yeah. a bet on that, but not as the favorite. For me, it's got to be Denny Hamlin. He's, yeah. uh, I think he showed once again, without the pit crew error, we're having a completely different conversation again this week that it's Hamlin who is starting to look like the most dominant driver in NASCAR. So yep. I, I like Hamlin at that 7-1 to one number up. He's going to be the first guy on my card this week. 
Yeah, he's one of the uh he he won the the last Richmond race too. So yep. um obviously a lot of comfort at this track and there's a reason why he is priced accordingly. Uh but like you, I'm going to I'm actually going to fade of fade a lot of this range. Hamlin would probably be the guy um if I had to bet somebody. Um but for for the show purposes, I want to dive down cuz I think there is a lot more potential as we scroll. So We'll stay with Kyle Larson, 10 to 1, Ryan Blaney at 12, uh, Ross Chastain at 12 or 13. Kevin Harvick, can he go back to back? Because this feels he's, like like if you were telling me that he could w- get his one win, it would either be last week or this week. So, um, you know, he goes, what, 65 races without a win. Now he's going to go back to back. I mean, a lot <laughs> of the numbers point to him performing well. He was second here um, last yep. time. He was sixth at Phoenix, which has a similar um, kind of layout, was fifth at New Hampshire, uh, which our guy in iFantasy Race pointed out are, are kind of some yeah, some okay. good track comps, even though this is obviously a short track. In terms of like the track setup, it's a lot flatter. Um, and he was, he didn't do great at Martinsville, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, he he's interesting. Would I rather have 20, 25? Sure. Uh, but in terms of track setup, in terms of potential, um, and in terms of his number on this betting board, I think it's definitely palatable if you want to go back to him. Uh, it, look, I am extremely happy for Harvick to uh, have cashed that 25 to 1 ticket. But how can anybody go back to the outright market on a guy who just had his first win in his in the last 66 races? I, I don't yeah. see another one coming. Like, I know he's been incredible throughout his career. He looked fantastic last week. But, I mean, you got to give it to uh, Joey Logano. There, there was some credence to Bubba Wallace saying that Logano was just trying to secure another Ford contract as um, he did kind of hold Bubba up. Had yeah. that not happened, who knows? Maybe he's able to catch... Harvick with uh, under two seconds of a lead, you know, yep. you don't, you don't really know. So it, I, I couldn't go back to the outright market with him, you know, more in the uh, matchups again, just because again, he's proven to be able to avoid contact. Um, for me, this is going to sound disgusting, but I can't, for some reason, it, Joey Logano is intriguing to me at that 16 to one number. Yes. Um, he, He's he's been pretty good here. Uh, yeah. He's got a win over the last ten races that came way back in 2017. But I mean, prior to this season's race, he had three consecutive finishes inside the top five. Um, he's always qualifying well at this track. He ran really well last weekend. He's kind of you know coming into his better stage of the season, even though he's not winning races, but that's just a good number that I like early on that if he qualifies good, that's probably going closer to his teammate Blaney or Chastain at 12. Yeah. And that number has moved too. Cause I've seen people getting 20, 22s um, on number 22. So that, that number is shortening. Um, that number was much higher when, when numbers jumped out. So obviously uh, you're on the right page. And um, when Brian is on Logano, it, it hurts him internally so you know that he really truly wants to bet it um next next couple guys uh bubba wallace 15 20 was really fast showing the ability to be more of a threat on multiple tracks probably more of a top three top five guy i'm thinking this week but could be interesting uh i'm gonna go to back to william byron you're you must be inside my head right now his number for what he can do is insane. Um, we, we've we talked a little bit about him, but in terms of just kind of him as a driver this year, he's feast or famine, obviously. Exactly. Uh, one on another short track in Martinsville was third here when he ran back in April. Um, I, I just trust him um, to to have a really strong performance. And I think the number that we're getting is not indicative of the potential. Exactly. The the only uh, caveat that I would say to that is the fact that Toyota's won six of the last eight races at Richmond. And I think uh, Ford and Chevy have split the other two. So again, we're running into a situation where 
Hendrick just hasn't been able to kind of figure things out at this track. But like you said, William Byron, uh, he's going to be the third guy on my, on my card already. Cause I did add Joey Logano, which is disgusting, yep. but, uh, Byron always qualifies well here. Three of his last four trips, he's qualified inside the top five. Um, he qualified second, led 122 laps in that third place finish earlier this year. So he clearly was able to kind of pace the field. He was one of the fastest cars on track all day. And I mean, he's riding a seven race streak of finishing outside the top 10 and his talent is not at that level of finishing positions. So a a boom weekend is coming and I want to be on it, especially when the numbers are so long early on in the week. Yeah. I'm really tempted to throw the Bubba number on there as well, because at 20, it's really compelling. At 15, I'm not as interested. Um, I, it, we talked just the about fact this. that DraftKings is hanging that number out when the rest of the market has moved. Yeah. And considering like he what he did at New Hampshire, um, what he's done, and just kind of at, of late, and the way he's been able to be competitive on similar tracks on – non-similar tracks he just he looks to be in the right headspace um but i think i think i'm gonna look at like some placement marks for him and and kind of just go that way yeah we had talked about bubba uh, a couple of weeks ago when ty gibbs was taking it was driving for kurt court that for kurt bush um it's almost as if that team just kind of said all right this is learning time for ty gibbs we're not really going to put too much focus on his results and we're going to go all in on trying to help Bubba make the playoffs. And it's really shown these last couple of races. I mean, we, the the entire team around the 23 squad is putting together like some of their best overall performances from the pit crew to Bubba. Like he is driving as best, as good as he ever has. And like you said, you're getting, you know, four, four units better at DK than you are at anywhere else. So that's almost, you're, you're betting the value at that yeah. point. Yeah, and that's kind of what where my head goes just naturally. Um, yeah. I do want to say, like, the fact that we're debating potentially Martin Truex or Ryan Blaney missing the playoffs, that we have younger drivers stepping up, that we have the future already here in Ty Gibbs yeah. and Justin Haley and Todd Gilliland. And, like, the sport is in such a good spot with its wide array of, of drivers where even when we lose Truex and Harvick and kind of that, group of drivers we're still going to be in an amazing spot with high level quality drivers so um you know now is the time to be you know in getting into nascar because yeah and what's really interesting too is all of these guys are like big bold personalities Mm -hmm. essentially i mean ty gibbs was already seeing punching a guy with his helmet on you got todd uh noah gragson who finished really well this last weekend we've seen his antics in Xfinity, uh, you know, Bubba, he just draws the crowd. Like the sport is in a good place. And they got that show coming up on USA network about yeah. chase for the championship or something, which I'm pretty excited to watch. Uh, it's kind of their version of the F1 drive to survive, which in my opinion will be a lot better because it's NASCAR. I like it better than <laughs> F1, but uh, that's besides the point. But yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Like I'm excited for the future of, of NASCAR. Yeah. Um, do we have an update on Kurt Busch? Are we expecting to see him this week? I think they've been announcing his statuses on uh, Wednesday, so we probably won't get that until after uh, we're done recording. But, I mean, I'm going to assume he's not racing again. Okay. Um, Yeah, because he's definitely been trending in the right direction, so uh, we'll see. But, yeah, it'd be be good to get him back on the track. We'll we'll, uh, take a look at that number. I think beyond here, it's going to be really hard to get to anybody on the outright card. Yeah. Uh, was there any longer shots you wanted to hit on before we look at, you know, top five, top 10, that kind of market? No, I, I feel like at this stage of the season, uh, we kind of get an idea about like, who's got the potential to pop. Yeah. These, but, um, you know, getting that 25, 30 range is probably as far as you're really going to want to go at, at yeah. anything other than, um, a super speedway. Yep. hundred percent agree. Um, so yeah, so Bubba is in consideration, Logano's in consideration, Harvick's in consideration. Um, but the only official outright I've added at this point is is William Byron. I know you who else do who else do you have on your card, Brian? So I uh Denny, Denny Hamlin, um the uh Joey Logano. Um <laughs> and, and, Stay and with William the chest, Byron. come on. 
yeah, no, I like I like uh, both of those calls. Logano is compelling for sure. Uh, let's look at that top 10 market and see if we can't find some potential value. This is a good time to jump into these markets because the big bets haven't come in. You can get some better numbers than you will get uh, come race day for sure. Uh, Byron 135, 140 is fine, but as we've seen with him, it's like top five or top 15, top 20. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think I would avoid it here. I think I would go up or down. Tyler Reddick's interesting. Um, any, you know, any, any longer shot, any plus money top tens that are going to find a way onto your card this week. Honestly, this week, there's not a lot of guys that I have faith in to be able to perform very well here. I mean, uh, the Toyotas have been great. So, I mean, you, that's a very funneled group of cars there that yeah. are all uh, odds clearly um, favored to finish inside the top 10. Um, you know, it, going back to Eric Jones, I think he's shown to be good enough to potentially pop at this track. I, I'd still consider an Austin Sindrick who's been a great rookie. I mean, as far as rookies go, he's been actually really good. And if, if it wasn't for that crash last week, you're probably cashing that top 10 number. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, it really, for me, it's, it's only those two guys. I, there's not a lot of people that I have a lot of faith in. I mean, you can go back to Alex Bowman at plus yeah. money, but he's just going to break your heart after he does that. having his best finish in forever. Uh, Austin Dillon is interesting. Um, ran well last time. They were they were in Richmond, um, has flashed at you know at this style of track at some of the similar styles of track, but he's just been man he's been rough this year. Um, I just I feel like I'll I'll get a top ten on him and then he'll finish eleventh. Chris Busher, no Chris Busher. Man, no. I... it's an interesting week for sure. Uh, yeah. Not feeling a ton, to be honest. I think, you know, Cindric, I could see myself getting to um, Alex Bowman, but like even plus 115 on a guy who's, I don't know, like even last week we were excited about him and he barely finished top 10. So like, yeah, hey, before we before we move on to the to the next uh, market, I do got to say BJ McLeod. Uh, I'm not going to bet him, but the fact that that dude finished inside the top 24 or whatever it was on the lead lap, like you got to give it up to that guy. <laughs> Mr. McLeod didn't crash. He had a, he finished on the lead lap or maybe not on the lead lap, but he finished ahead of a ton of cars. Like It's amazing. Some him. of these people that they let drive. I swear to God. <laughs> it's He's like they want a so fantasy contest to else. like, I don't know how drive they allow NASCAR that. drivers. Yeah, I don't I don't understand how they kind of allow that to be so far off the pace. Like you're you're almost a, a hindrance yeah. to the to the race. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. I, I think yeah, I don't know. Uh let's see if there's any interesting numbers in the head to head market. I know it's early, so we'll see if there's any um Anything jumping out as we kind of dive in early? There's not going to be a ton, but I think DraftKings will have some good stuff for us. Uh, Logano versus Harvick. I think that's probably priced right. Uh, Logano versus Blaney. Logano plus money versus Blaney. I know Blaney is Ugh, solid. I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. I mean, I'll no, pick I Logano know. on an outright, but you can't fade yourself if you're if you want him, if he's going to do better than Blaney, he needs to win. Uh, yeah, Harvick gonna... at plus two fifteen over Hamlin. That's going on the card. I, I, I mean, mean, I expect Danny Danny to run well, but just double at plus two fifteen. That's just silly. Like that does not make sense. Yeah, that is kind of a ridiculous number. Especially considering um, taking finishing results out of it, like I said, Denny Hamlin was winning that race if it wasn't for his pit crew error. Yeah, hundred percent. And I expect Denny yeah. to run well. And but if this was like one twenty five, I would be like, eh, that probably makes sense. One fifteen, sure. But plus yeah. two fifteen, no, 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 thank you. Um, no, I'll I'll take my I'll take my value and. Over the course of the year, it se really seems like when you grab those big numbers, they uh, they pay off more than they don't. So um, 
There's enough value. Ooh, Byron over Harvick. Sure. So really I'm going to take uh, Hamlin over Truex at minus 110. I, yeah, I think that makes sense. I have a lot more faith in what Hamlin's shown on track. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Busch over Truex at plus 100. Christopher Bell over Kyle Busch at plus 105. Go back to the Larson over Elliott at minus 105. That's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Nah, but they're now they're getting us because remember we were getting plus money on that. Yeah. Blaney versus Chastain. Blaney over Bubba. Blaney. Mm. Yeah. You know. You know what? I'm taking this. Just because it's plus money. And I feel like he'll probably he he may qualify better than him. I'm gonna add Byron over Harvick, just because it is plus money at the at the moment. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, Byron over Harvick. Yeah. Yeah, I just I feel like I if you're asking me which of these drivers is gonna finish between fourth and like eighth, I would say Harvick. Bla Byron's either gonna be like top two or like back in the pack <laughs> so that 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 scares me a little bit i'd rather take a top three but i am taking byron over bubba at minus 110 um feel pretty decent about that uh, yeah the card is going to be light i think we'll I'll, I'll add more as the week rolls along for sure yeah um but at this point there's not a million things jumping out at me um Let's look at top five market before we give a best bet and get out of here. Um, see if there's anything jumping out. These are some decent numbers for top fives uh, on guys that we expect to run well. Just so, so concerning giving the, as we've mentioned, even when they're running well for, you know, 95% of the race, there's some pit crew incident. There's some other incident. Joey Logano top five at two to one. Hmm. Yep, that's going on the card. I'm going to add the Byron top five at plus 250. Uh, it's a little bit down there, but Byron, like we said, like he's either finishing really good or he's finishing like shit. So if yep. he's going to finish good. It's likely going to be inside that top five. I think that makes sense. I think, you know, top five, even top three, if you don't want to go to the outright. Um, but that, you know, 20 to one is just too hard for me to pass. Um, especially with some of the names he's around, like he he's, I know he hasn't had the year that we all kind of hoped he would, but um, he's better than I think where he's being priced. Let's look at the top three market to see if I can't find a better number. Man, top three market, you're getting you're getting frisky. Those those terrify me. Yeah. Uh oh, William Byron plus five fifty. That is going on the card. Um, it's just a little outright insurance, I'm going to call it, because um, if he gets second or third. Um, yeah, no, that makes a lot of happy sense. happy to have it. I don't know that I want to go, you know, down here. Like, this would be a good spot. I think Logano would make a lot of sense on the top three market, but you can get top five at about half that. Two extra spots is really a lot. Um, Harvick, same thing. Like, I think both these guys I'd feel much better about. Uh, but I think this is a good spot to kind of get these guys too. Yeah. You know, almost three to one to just finish in the top three. Feels pretty good. Um, okay. I think that is it for today's show. Uh, let's take a look at our current bets uh let's see if we can't find some best bets for the people brian and uh you know feel free to mention anything you're considering as well so right now you have hamlin logano and byron on the outright card uh you have byron and logano top tens i think both those make sense at good numbers um hamlin over truex byron over harvick and the Byron top five. Anything else you're considering or uh, anyone else you're potentially adding as we uh, go through the week? Well, it, like 
I don't mind going to the top 10 market with Harvick because it's it's not a horrible line. I think it's like minus 165 or minus 175 for a guy who does that pretty much every single race. Yeah, at this I'll track. take a look uh, at that because I think I'm, I added I added the Logano because that's a decent number. And, yeah, like, I mean, you got to attack numbers that are even in the in the negative category uh, occasionally, although it's not something that we like doing. Yeah, he's but minus, I mean, like, minus 150 at... Where's that FanDuel? Yeah, see what I mean? Like I could do that. That's a that's what I mean. There there are certain drivers who like them or hate them. Uh they're just consistent enough that when they lay lines like this, you almost have to take advantage of that. I mean, just a good example is the fact that he's one to two to top ten at DK as opposed to minus one fifty over at FanDuel. And you know those odds are gonna shift after qualifying. Yep. Yep, and I think it'll be a lot closer to this, probably even shorter than this. No, it'll so probably that, be a lot shorter than that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, 170 is just a little a bridge too far. I'd rather be in this range, but it's priced accordingly. So right now I have William Byron uh, to win at 20 to 1. As I mentioned, Logano's potential, uh, uh, Baba potentially, maybe Kevin Harvick if I want to get frisky. Um, I do have fris- I do have Harvick over Hamlet. Just because of that plus 215, I think it's a yeah. good number. Uh, Byron over Bubba at minus 110. I have Logano to top five. I have Byron to top three. I also have Logano to top 10. So at minus 150, it's it's a nice it's a nice number. And I think I will just ride with you in two units. So Brian Twining, we broke down our cards. We obviously recapped what was last week. That leaves one thing and one thing only. What is your best bet as we sit here on Tuesday? Uh, for the Federated Auto Parts 400. Well, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and back the guy who I said is due for a a good race. And when he races good, he finishes really well. And that's going to be a William Byron top five um, at plus 250. I'm going to make that my best bet this week. I'm going to add a couple of units onto there and make it a three-unit play. I think he's ready to break out of that crappy string of finishes. So... Byron is my guy this week. Like I went in with Harvick. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Obviously, I have him on the outright. I have him top three. I probably should have the top five, but you know, I won't because you know, idiot. Um, I'm gonna go with Logano top ten. Logano top five is really compelling, but my God, m- minus 150. I expect him to perform really well, so I'll put five units on that. Let's just say that we were extremely close to putting the absolute ultimate curse on Joey Logano. Oh, yeah. No, I, it, it, I almost went Logano top 10 as my best bet because I good like, he's too good here. He's a good driver at this track. He's a good number. As I mentioned, his yep. outright uh, number has shrank uh, throughout the first couple of days of lines being out. Um I expect that number to continue to shrink. So if you like him, I would highly, highly suggest getting on it now. Um, and I think if he qualifies well, that number is going into 10 and if not shorter. So uh, Brian Twining, this was fun. Obviously, we'll be back as we normally are on Sunday morning for you. So if you are new to the show, make sure you subscribe, do all the things, uh, hit the like button. Let us know your, your early leans for the Federated Auto Parts 400. Enjoy uh, the rest of your week, and we'll talk to you on Sunday morning.